All right, this is part two of the Chrome Mapper tutorial. And first, let's go over map navigation. So I'm going to pull up the map that I've created for purposes of this tutorial. It's called Hazard. Uh, it's one of the 99 Lives tracks. And I've built a complete expert level, uh, expert plus level, also a 360 degree level that we'll get into later. So let me open the expert plus. All right, so navigating your map is pretty straightforward. The mouse scroll wheel will, uh, of course, send you through the map as you scroll through it. It will scroll at the rate of your, inter your cursor interval selection up here. So you've got two boxes that you can, you can click through. You can also hit X. X will cycle through them. That's the hotkey. Um, the top box I have selected at a quarter beat. Uh, the bottom box is at one beat, and that will affect how quickly I go through the map. So this is at a quarter beat, this is at one beat. And so you can also hold down control uh, with this box selected and you can then scroll with the mouse wheel and that will change your interval size. So that's a quick way to do it. Uh, it, it defaults to multiples of two. So one to two to four to eight, etc. If you need to go in multiples of three, just click one of the boxes, change the denominator, and then the scroll wheel, as you scroll it upward, will go by, uh, well, it goes first to 6, then to 12, 24, 48. Now, of course, you can also jump around the map very quickly using the bookmarks that you would have created by now. And uh, like I said before, I went through and I labeled these. What I have, I've got a uh, build one. I've got a first drop section. I've got a post drop section. Um, Drop two also probably could have been labeled a bridge because it is it is different from the other drops But really like I said as long as they make sense to you and you can keep track of them. That's what matters most um, And so that's that's a very easy way to navigate through your map and it'll make your mapping process much swifter All right, you can also rotate your view of the map with the mouse key So I'm I'm now holding down the right click button and as I as I swivel uh, the mouse cursor around that will change my view also, as I hold down the right cursor button, you can use the WASD keys to rotate your camera view around the track. So this is me, A, D, W moves you forward, S moves you back, or zooms you out. So W, zoom in, S, zoom out. And uh, control will send you down, spacebar sends you up. All right, so you'll get used to those. They're very useful to navigate around if you need to view things from a different angle. Now, another cool feature that I like is um, the jump to object feature. So let's say I want to jump to one of these objects up here, but not navigate to it using the scroll wheel. I can hold down Alt, Shift, and then I hit the left click button, and that jumps me, jumps my cursor, rather, to that target over which I was hovering. So if I do that again, I can do that on this wall. I can do that on this bomb. Um, really, any, any object will work, but you can, you can quickly navigate through your map if you're targeting certain sections that you want to adjust as you're going through. That's a quick way to do it. All right, so let's talk about object placement. So up here, you can cycle through the objects that you have selected. It defaults to notes, and you can hit 1 for red, red targets, 2 for blue targets, 3 will select bombs, uh, number four will select a wall. So walls are a little bit trickier. To place a wall, first select the wall by hitting the number four key. And now navigate to the beat marker where you want to start the wall. And first you need to decide whether you're doing a top wall, which is just uh, along the top here, or a full length wall, something like this. And that's just by moving your cursor to the top or the bottom of the grid. Now, once I have the, the correct height selected, I will click, and that locks in the, the wall height, and now I need to decide the, the width. Now, typically, you don't do this. You're, you're going to be limited to a, a side wall uh, like this, either a side wall or a, a double wide side wall. And then once, once I've done that, let's say I want to do uh, this double side wall, you can scroll and adjust the length of your wall as you scroll. So I've got my interval selected of quarter beat, and then I can scroll as long as I need to to create this wall. So here I've created a, a wall that is three, 
three beats in length. And if for whatever reason after I've created that wall, I want to shorten it or lengthen it, then I will hover over the wall with my mouse, hold down the Alt key, and then again I will just use the mouse wheel to adjust it. So this will adjust it at the interval that I have selected, and so it's very easy to fine-tune your walls if you need to shorten them a little bit. Now if your wall is not on the correct beat, then you'll need to delete it and replace it. So if I wanted to start it here instead, then I would just delete it. So walls are a little bit trickier, but once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. And of course, you can set them at any sort of interval. For example, I sometimes like to use what I call groove walls just to get people leaning side to side. I'll do those typically at a one, a one eighth beat interval, something like that. So you've got plenty of options when it, when it comes to the length of your walls. All right, now when you place a target, going back to the target, so I've got the red targets here, red and blue targets, so blue for your right hand, red for your left. Um, when you place a target, you are also selecting its orientation, so the direction in which it's going to be uh, hit by the player. So here the, the orientation is down. Uh, you can change the orientation prior to placement by using the, the WASD key. So W sends it down, S up, A to the right, D to the left. You can also hit uh, W and A simultaneously, WD, AS, AD, to create uh, diagonals. Now, if you want to adjust a target's orientation that has already been placed, that's also easy to do. There's a setting, so you hit Escape to go to Options, click Options, and then there's a setting here called Quick Note Editing, right? And I've got it enabled. So when this setting is enabled, I can hover over a placed target, hit the Alt key, and then I can use my WASD keys to adjust its orientation. So that is an option. It also happens to select the target. So when a target is selected, it will be outlined in uh, cyan like that. If you ever want to deselect anything, control A. To delete targets, uh, you will hold down shift and then you will click the middle mouse button. So that can apply to any sort of object. You can just hover, you can hover over it. You don't need to be on the beat and just shift middle click. Or you can also use the Alt key, Alt plus left click, to snap targets to your current cursor position. And that can come in handy when, for whatever reason, targets have been placed off the beat on accident, um, and it's easy to adjust them to the correct beat. So let's play this section. Maybe you can hear something that sounds a little bit off. Okay, so I'm tracking that little synth that's going on in the background. And it turns out that my placement here is a quarter beat late than where it should be. So to fix that, I'm going to navigate to the correct beat, then I'm going to hold down Alt, and then hover over these notes, and then just click them, left-click them to my current cursor position, and then they'll be lined up to the beat. Now another cool feature is the remote adjustment option. So this will actually snap your uh, beat marker to a remote note or target that you can adjust. So this you hold down Alt and then you right click on some distant target to adjust its position from a distance. Of course if you ever delete something that you didn't want to delete, Control Z will undo, Control Y will redo. Alright, so I want to talk a little bit about repetition and mirroring. Now mirroring is the word that I'm using when you copy and paste something and then you horizontally flip it so that it becomes the mirror image of what you had copied on your clipboard. And what you'll usually find is that within 16 or 32 count sections, you'll have a musical element that repeats three to four times. And a pattern mapped to that musical element can typically be repeated about that many times before it starts feeling repetitive. Don't be afraid to create that level of repetition. Uh, the section will tend to flow better and players will appreciate the predictability and familiarity that repetition brings. So here in this section that I've labeled B, 
Uh, this is a 32 count section that does not repeat anywhere else in this song. Um, and it has a um, it has a musical element, that synth thing that's going on in the background that repeats exactly four times. So that gives me an opportunity to create an eight count pattern that will repeat four times and that can flow into each other. So take a look at what I've done here. I, I mapped out this eight count pattern and we're going to see what it looks like when I repeat it four times through this section. Okay, so the, the pattern starts at 68, and then it repeats at 76. And what you can see here is that my starting targets are upswings. See that? So when I ended this section, this eight count pattern, I wanted to make sure my arms were in a downward position because I knew that they'd be going up in the next, uh, the next hit. So when you're, when you're repeating in a section like this, it is helpful to keep in mind uh, how you're starting, how you're ending, and where you're going between the, the transition sections. Now we can talk about the range select tools. All right, so you've got two options. One option is to hold down the control key, which and you'll see this little box that, that pops up, uh, click, and then I can let go. And now I can shape this box as if it were a wall. So it's, it's like a wall and I can, I can make it any shape I want. And I can make it, I can select any range I want and once I click again, it will select all the objects in that space that I made with that giant, that giant rectangle. And then of course I can hit Control C and that goes to my clipboard. Now that they're all highlighted in green, that indicates that this selection is on my clipboard. And I can hit Control A to make that disappear, but it's, it is still on my clipboard at this point. So that's option A for your range select. Uh, personally, I prefer this other option, which you, you use the shift click to select a target. Now, shift click is how you manually select individual objects. You can hold down shift and then left click as many objects as you want to uh, select them. So with this one, I will select the first object. Then I'm going to scroll forward. I'm going to hold control shift and then left click the final object in the range select, and that will select each and every intervening object in that range. So that is the mode that I prefer. Uh, I find it most handy, but uh, of course you can use either one. So now I copy that to my clipboard, deselect. And like I said, this eight count pattern that I created, I'm going to be repeating it throughout this section. So I'm going to copy it here, control V. Uh, but now I wanna flip it. So I wanna balance the player out. I don't want to have them just doing the same thing on each side. So I will click this uh, icon up here, the mirror selection, and it flips them all to the other side, every, every uh, object in the selection. So deselect. And all right, so now I've, got a, now I've got 16 counts of this 32 count section mapped. But now what I want to do, I've got a little bit of a problem here because my transition point has an awkward hit here. So this, this hit, this diagonal downward hit with my left hand into this upward diagonal hit, that's a little bit of an awkward transition. So to smooth that out, uh, I'm just gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete this uh, red target here so that now the player's arm is flowing from this position in sort of a cross position up to this diagonal, and that should flow well. So now what I do is I will just carry that eight count pattern through again. So it's still on my clipboard. I'm going to paste it. This time I won't mirror it because I'm repeating the first pattern. So one and three will be exact duplicates of each other, uh, just as two and four will be exact duplicates of each other. Here, of course, I again have the flow issue. I'm going to delete that target to make it flow. And then finally, I, I arrive at the last section, copy it again, mirror it, and fix the flow. And now I should have a section that flows completely. You can see what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm bringing the player right and then left, and then I center them with this cross hit, and then they go left and right and center and so on. So you can kind of see how that, how that works.
and I want to fix that last flow issue. And then it gets on into another section. Control S will save it. You'll want to do that periodically. But anyway, that, that should work well. Um, this pattern is designed to keep people flowing comfortably, to weight shift comfortably back and forth. And th those are some principles that you want to keep in mind as you're uh, building a map. Now, like I said earlier, this section that I labeled B, it does not repeat anywhere else uh, in the map. And that's one reason why I just chose to repeat a single eight count uh, pattern four times. If it is a section that does repeat later, then maybe you want to uh, do something a little bit differently. Maybe do two 16 count patterns that, that are different and then you repeat them later. It's really up to you, um, but I do want to reiterate that repetition is okay. Uh, you only tend to get in trouble if you start repeating th things more than four times in a row. That's when a player will start feeling the monotony, the repetitiveness of it. Um, but until then, you're pretty safe. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that there is, there is an error checker plugin that shows up here in the top left. So we've got the check errors. So I can click this icon. And the first one is the vision block checker. So the vision block error check will scan the map to predict where vision blocks may be occurring. So as you can see, it defaults to a, a minimum time of a quarter beat, 0.24, and a maximum of 0.75. So th this means that the checker will look for objects that are placed in this, uh, these middle two uh, uh, grid points. These are the vision block sections. So if you place targets here, they are in danger of uh, blocking targets that come after. So if I were to run this checker now, look at that. I've just created a vision block. Uh, this, is, this is blocking the vision to this note down here. Right? So I delete it, run it again, and the vision, check, the vision block is gone. So I run it uh, and it says, even with my, my normal mapping, I've got a 28 problems. So uh, I click on this arrow to find the first problem. It jumps me to beat 169. So at beat 169, I've got this blue target that is outlined in red. Like I said, that indicates that the blue target is doing the vision blocking. And then the red target behind there at beat 170 uh, is being vision blocked. How will I fix this? I'm going to hold down Alt and then left click on this blue target. And I'm just gonna drag it over one grid point to the left. Now that should clear up the vision block so that when I run it again, no error. So I can go through and I can do that very quickly. Uh, I fix all these, very helpful. So, so it's very important to check for vision blocks. Also, as you're testing your map to make sure that these are in fact vision blocks, uh, you'll want to do that. And to complete the process, you'll just keep clicking through until it says zero problems found. Um, I'll also go, so let's look at the stacked notes uh, error check. This one, you probably won't encounter too often. Chromapper already does a pretty good job at preventing you from stacking notes. That means, that means placing a note uh, uh, in the place of our, an existing note. So if I were to place one here, um, what it does actually is it, it just replaces what, what I already had there. So like I said, Chromapper already does a good job at, at preventing this. But if for whatever reason you ended up with stacked notes, you would run this test to see if there were any problems. There, there aren't any here. All right, so this concludes part two of this tutorial. And in part three, we'll be going over how to build rotations into your map if you want to create a 360 degree level.